Hello, I'm Tom Meeks, and this is 3D Design for Fun and Life, featuring Moment of Inspiration, using the uniquely easy noun and verb method. This session is Palette 3 Verbs, Tab 1, Construct, Row 2. We introduce the first two verbs in Row 2 in this session, Extrude and Revolve. The purpose of this session is to give you a quick understanding of the very important palette 3, row 2 verb options in case your brain decides to take off in a fun, creative excursion. While we won't provide all the details about these verbs in this session, always remember that in the upper right corner of the screen, moment of inspiration will always guide you with step-by-step -step directions. We continue our introduction to pad 3 verbs by moving to row 2. The first verb in row 2 is extrude. The extrude verb. Extrude is the most used verb in the moment of inspiration tool box. Extrude works by tracing the outline of a curve, face, or edge along a direction. The default method. We select extrude by clicking on the extrude verb button. The extrude dialog opens. The prompt says, select curves, edges, or faces to extrude. We'll select the center circle and click on Done. The Extrude dialog expands. The new prompt says, Pick Extrusion Point, and a text box appears with a label that says Distance. This value determines how far the curve will be traced. In the default method, the trace direction is always 90 degrees to the plane of the selected curve, face, or edge. There are also two checkboxes. One says Cap Ends, and the other says both sides. We'll uncheck cap ends and check both sides. Now, go to the 3D view. Notice that with both sides checked, extrude traces in two directions from the selected curve. Uncheck both sides. Notice too, that when cap ends is not checked, extrude simply traces a thin wall that cannot be 3D printed. Check cap ends. When cap ends is checked, a solid is created that can be 3D printed. If you are designing for 3D printing, make sure cap ends is checked. As we move the mouse, the distance value changes. We can either click the left mouse button to select the current value or enter a final precise value of the distance text box. A new 3D solid is created when we check the cap ends option and extrude a 2D curve. Select the top face by clicking twice on the new solid object and click on the Extrude button. Because we selected the face before clicking on Extrude, the dialog opens in the expanded view and we see a new checkbox labeled Keep Separate, which we will check and immediately extrude the face. We create a completely new object when Keep Separate is checked. But before finalizing our Extrude verb, we'll uncheck Keep Separate. As we move the mouse upward, with Keep Separate unchecked, the new extrusion is automatically Boolean unioned to the original object. But if we go below the face, the new negative extrusion is automatically Boolean differenced from the original object. Click the left mouse button to finalize the extrude. The Set DIR method. While the default extrude method always traces 90 degrees to the plane of the selected curve or face, set DIR or set direction gives us the option to assign our own extrusion direction, which we define using two points. Click twice on the top face and click on extrude. This time, we'll click on the set DIR button and go to the front view. The prompt reads, pick first direction point. We'll select the center of the top and click the left mouse button. The prompt reads, pick second direction point. We'll select a new point and click the left mouse button. We can then enter a distance value to complete extrude. We'll undo to demonstrate set path. Set path. We can also change the direction of the extrude operation using a path. 
In the front view, we'll draw a simple freeform line as our path. We select the top face and click on Extrude. The expanded dialog opens and we click on Set Path. The prompt tells us to select a path. When we click on the path, the new extrude follows the selected path. We'll view the result in the 3D view. We'll undo the last extrude and delete the path. Two point. Selecting the top face, we click on extrude. Click on the two point button. No matter how high we go with our mouse, we extrude to a point. The default two point travels 90 degrees. But we have the option to unlock the direction. We'll go to the front view and unlock. Click the left mouse button to finalize the extrude. We'll undo the two point extrude. The two-point extrude is especially impressive when used with polygons and stars. It has been a clear favorite among all of our students over the years. The final method is tapered. Go to the 3D view. Select the top face. Click on Extrude and then click on the tapered button. We have a new option called Draft Angle. This is the taper angle. We'll try some different values. Click the left mouse button to finalize. Let's click on the new face and taper in a negative direction. To do this, we can either check the flip option or enter a negative value as the draft angle. We'll check the flip option. A cone is cut into the original object using automatic Boolean diff. This behavior is very cool. Click the left mouse button to finalize the extrude. And one final extrude surprise. There is a very special behavior that makes extrude an even more powerful verb. Let's delete our 3D solid to check out this useful behavior. This behavior is based on nested closed curves. Closed curves may contain other closed curves inside them to form holes in the final extrude result. We'll click on multiple circles to demonstrate this. The outer circle is our container curve. The small circles and the inner circle are contained within the outer circle. Selecting these contained circles, We'll perform a default extrude for the entire group with a value of 5 millimeters. The small circles in the inner circle within the outer circle end up forming holes when we extrude the selected group. In one easy move, we were able to create a mounting bracket complete with screw holes. Using extrude again, we'll add an extension to complete a bracket to mount one end of a PVC pipe to a wall. Chamfer gives the mount a finished look. Two of these mounts are a great way to hang a background for Zoom calls that can easily be set up and taken down. Without a doubt, you'll find hundreds of wonderful opportunities to put Extrude to good use. Extrude samples. All of these creations relied heavily on Extrude as the primary verb required to turn their base 2D curves into fun or useful 3D objects. The Revolve Group. There are two very captivating methods in the Revolve Group. I use the word captivating because it's possible to enjoy hours of experimenting with these two methods, creating anything from a simple cup to sculpture that appears to be elaborate and very complex, but actually is simple to design. When we click on the Revolve Group button, it opens up to reveal our two Revolve methods.
I'm going to use the same profile curve to demonstrate how each of these methods is used. The Revolve method. Revolve spins a 2D curved noun around an axis to create a new 3D noun. From the front view, the Revolve dialog box says, Select Curves to Revolve. We select our profile and click on the Done button. The prompt changes to Pick Revolve Axis Start Point. And there's a text box labeled Angle. We'll keep the default value of 360. We'll click anywhere on the Z axis using the left mouse button. The prompt changes to Pick Revolve Axis End Point. Again, we'll select another point on the Z axis and press the left mouse button. Our new 3D solid is created. We'll delete that for now so we can demonstrate the Rail Revolve method using the same profile. The Rail Revolve method. Click on the Rail Revolve button. The Rail Revolve method goes one step further by allowing us to add an additional 2D curve that will define a more complex path. We'll see this better in the 3D view. We'll spin the same 2D noun around an axis, but add the rail to see the result. The Rail Revolve dialog box prompt says, Select Profile Curve. We select our profile, and it automatically goes to the next prompt. The next prompt says Select Rail Curve. We'll select the curve with a pattern. The prompt changes to Pick Revolve Axis Start Point. Notice that this time we don't have the angle text box. The path determines the revolve angle. We'll click anywhere on the Z axis using the left mouse button. The prompt changes to Pick Revolve Axis Endpoint. And we'll select another point on the Z axis and press the left mouse button. The new 3D solid is created. That's quite a striking difference, isn't it? I love experimenting with both Revolve methods using different profiles, axis directions, and rails. The possibilities are endless. Here are some samples of objects created with the Revolve group. Both extrude and revolve are very powerful verbs. In fact, they are probably the most used verbs in moment of inspiration. But there are two more equally fun verbs in row two. And that is our focus in the next session. There's a lot more fun to come. See you there.